Hello, my name is Jason Kent. I'm one of the owners of JNS Land and Cattle here in Gardnerville, Nevada, in the beautiful Carson Valley. This is a presentation that I put together on holistic management and regenerative agriculture solely based on my context as a first generation rancher. I know that you will have seen or have seen presentations from scientists and various other holistic managers and regenerative agriculture uh, people. And my hope was to take you through some photos to give you my context here in the valley of how these practices have not only changed the land, but increased our bottom line. This is a short video that was put together by a friend of mine that shows the ranch here, the headquarters ranch in Gardnerville. And I think it's important for me to talk about holistic management and why we went that way. For us, holistic management are practices that we try to balance the economical, the environmental, and the social all together. And the social being the love for the Western lifestyle and the heritage. The regenerative side of it is the product of the holistic management. It's the product of taking care of our soil and our environmental. And we've learned that being first generation ranchers, the barrier to entry is very high. And we knew that we were gonna have to produce more with less. And we saw upward trends through various organizations. I've studied with the Savory Institute and that's where I've really learned a lot about monitoring and planning my grazing so that I can utilize techniques to help improve my soil ecology, which will then increase my stocking rates, which will then allow me to continue to live this lifestyle that I love, which is the Western ranching heritage lifestyle. I've been fortunate enough to build this business with my father. He and I have been in business together since the very beginning, and I'm loving the fact that we get to do this and live a dream together. My wife has been supremely supportive of this, and to round out the social aspect of our holistic management, the man you saw in the video is our ranch manager. He's much more photogenic than I am, and he looks a lot more like the real deal than I do because he is the real deal. He rides for the brand, and it's been an amazing thing to see his family grow up in the ranching culture and how he's taught them the traditions of how we utilize horses to doctor cattle, to move cattle, to sort cattle, really in a way that is as traditional as it can be in this time and age. This photo is of our ranch manager and myself out doctoring cattle. And I think a lot of what is important is holistic management can give you practice tools, but you still have to manage the cattle and have stockmanship. And in our situation that stockmanship allows for us to manage cattle in a much more stress-free way because we are taking time and things are done at a slower pace so to focus on what you guys are here for which is the environmental side of my holistic management practices this is the 300 acres that we started with it's a view looking south uh, you can see the tail end of Job's Peak on the right there. Um, what I think is important to note that this ground has continually become more productive. Over the years, our stocking rates have increased and it has allowed me to utilize this as a site that I'm going to employ an ecological outcome verification study and measure carbon sequestration and soil ecology. The photos that you're looking at here are on the top, a photo of our sacrifice area. And I think it's a great thing and a great photo because it shows how many cattle we are actually running on these pastures that we're building and putting together. The bottom photo is of what the pasture looked like prior to having fencing on it. It was held as a set stock ranch and they would manage a set number of cattle based upon the set number of acres. Whereas what we 
are doing and have done is we would create pastures and we started with poly fence and we would try to maximize the amount of animals that we could put on a property and still be getting gains and be getting better feed quality coming in after the grass was rested. So in these first two photos, what you're looking at is on the left, our poly wire fence pasture situation. And on the right, just cattle getting moved out into the pasture. We moved from poly wire to high tensile wire on our way to where we are now, which is barbed wire pastures. And it wasn't that we didn't like the electric fencing, but with yearlings, we found that they didn't hold them as well and that they would move through them. And I was always putting animals back and I didn't want to damage our rotations and our planned grazing strategy. So it was important to me to keep cattle where they belong. So we moved from poly wire to high tensile wire that you see here. And you can already see changes in grass depending on where you are in the pasture. And I think that's really important when we're talking about planting grazing, understanding that not every pasture is equal and even on small places and that to maximize your grazing, you can't just rotate from one to the next. You have to plan your recovery periods and how long it's going to take and monitor those because certain pastures will recover better than others. This is a pasture that we're going to be looking at a lot because I have some great photos and I used it as a monitoring site. This was how I would leave a pasture when we were gathering cattle to move. And this happens to be what I was doing there as I was out. I took a picture. I gathered these cattle and moved them into the next field. And you can see that there's still a lot of grass left on the ground. I didn't eat stuff down to dirt. What I would try to do is graze it to a level where the grass still was responding with growing its root system down into the soil while still being able to send up a tiller, a leaf, without feeling that stress where it was pulling from its carbon reserves. At the same time, I was hoping that I could leave enough that the cattle would push these grass down onto the topsoil and with the amount of moisture we have in spring and early summer that that could decompose from being litter two into topsoil and feed the soil and therefore create a better succession of plants. And we'll see that a little bit later on in my photos. So what you're looking at here is a side-by-side -side comparison of fields in different stages. On the left, you're seeing two pastures next to each other, one that was just grazed, one that's still in recovery, and a field that this animal happened to walk under the fence, but that was a field we were gonna be going to next. And this photo was taken recently, so the grasses really have improved on the pastures, and, and as such, we've increased our gains, we've increased our stocking rates, and that allows us to produce more on less. So it's helping take care of that economical side. Here you're looking at that same Southern pasture coming back to it for the second time that season after 30 days of recovery. So typically our recovery periods are shorter in the early parts of the season when we have water, the temperatures are right. As we get later into the summer, we typically have less water, it's hotter, our grasses aren't growing as quickly and therefore I have to graze accordingly and stock accordingly. For us, our stocking rates would start really heavy in the spring and as we would sell cattle when they hit a certain weight, we would bring back cattle and we would bring back less so that the grass had a chance to adequately recover. We would graze fields longer but the fields that we weren't grazing had longer to recover. A lot of people typically graze differently than us, have the ability to, this is what worked for us. You could break things down into electric fencing and move stuff every day, 
this is what worked for our, our particular context and our holistic plans. These are two really neat photos because the photo on the left shows a field that is in recovery versus a field that's being grazed and the irrigation water is moving through the recovering field into the field being grazed. When we first came out, one of our fears was the plant spacing wasn't there to support a large number of heavy animals without pugging and damaging the ground. What we found is that there really isn't a way on this property to keep cattle off of the ground that's irrigating currently just because of the way the irrigation system is set up and because of the amount of time that we have to irrigate the whole property. But what we have noticed is that these cattle, when they're grazing in these fields, they're, they're pushing grasses down right into that water. They're helping a decomposition. They're helping a nutrient cycle in the ground. And at the same time, we've seen that the grasses, the plant spacing is tightened up in, a, in such a manner and the topsoil and the root systems have become uh, robust enough that it can support these cattle being on there without damaging the grass, actually. So that's pretty neat. And the second photo is to kind of show you that right now you're looking from fence line to fence line, but we would move cattle. And in this situation, we're moving cattle from one side of the ranch all the way to the other because it just so happened that that particular pasture recovered quicker than I expected. And it was in better shape than the pasture that I had planned on going to. So what, that's why we monitor is so that we can plan, monitor and adjust our plans according to what's going on. Because as everybody who's in agriculture is very aware, there are so many variables, weather, water, how the animals are grazing, what they're grazing on out there, the stocking rates, all of these things change. And if you don't monitor it, there's no way that you can adequately plan for the next year using the data that you have from this year, but also know where you need to be in your planning phases and what pastures you need to be grazing. This is a photo that I think is really unique because it shows that even though we're in a 40 acre field, which approximately all my pastures are about 40 acres, and we had hundreds of animals out there, they still had space. So there was competition for grazing. They would eat the ice cream first, and then they would start picking at things that maybe weren't at quite as desirable before we moved on to a new field, but they still had space to move. And from the livestock welfare side of it, it was important to me to not have cattle stacked on top of each other. So this just demonstrates that even though you're running a, a lot of animals in a 40 acre field, at certain times it might seem like they're very close together and moving together as a very tight herd, but when they want to, they have the ability to spread out. These two photos, I just thought were really neat photos to show the difference from where we were at the beginning on that 300 acres to where we are now and what we're seeing with the robustness of grasses. We were seeing a lot of wire grass, a lot of Baltic rush, and now we're seeing a lot of timothy, a lot of orchard, clover, fescues. All of these grasses are really coming in and outcompeting the less desirable grasses. In a lot of situations, they're helping us outcompete thistle. And I understand that thistle and foxtail are part of the succession to getting to these desirable grasses. And it's always hard to look at that and not uh, rip them out of the ground. We do spot treat as needed, but part of our planning process is to plan for what we want, not what, and, and graze for what we want, not just graze for what we have currently. And I think that that's been very beneficial in seeing the changes. And what you're looking at here is cattle going into the corrals on a day that we were going to be sorting to ship. And on the right, you're looking at a a picture of when I was out irrigating last spring. Um, 
totally different parts of the ranch. As much as I would like to, I can't connect them contextually for you guys, but I wanted you guys to see that there are a lot of cattle moving through these, these pastures and our grazing strategies have yielded us results that were beyond what I could have imagined. Driving through this pasture on that ATV and seeing the thickness, the denseness, the height of these grasses coming in was amazing to me. And it was all part of our ability to utilize science to allow us to do something different. Not that there's a right or wrong way. This is what worked for us because we understood that with what we were trying to do, being able to produce that extra ounce of feed per square yard, multiplying that times acres gave us tons of extra feed, which allowed us to increase that stocking rate. And that photo where you see the red ATV really demonstrates how much this grass has changed over the years and how productive it's become in all the cycles, uh, whether it be our mineral cycle, our energy flow, our water cycle, or our social cycle. All of these things have contributed to a better ecosystem on this ranch. And it's been a really amazing thing to be a part of, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can do moving forward. All of these tools that I've learned from my management experience has actually helped me with another business and that's my real estate business where I can help people now with their holistic plans, with looking at ground and understanding what they can do, what could be done and what should be done to get them to where they need to be um, for their business. And while I am not an expert in any of this, I'm just simply a rancher that really enjoys this scientific process of learning. I'm also really enjoying getting to share that with people. And that's why I am doing this talk for you guys today. I hope that it was in some levels informative, that it was an enjoyable viewing experience. And I'm hoping that it opens a dialogue that allows us to go more in depth as to what I've seen with changes and where I see holistic management and regenerative agriculture going in the future. So thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to meeting some of you and talking with some of you more one day.